All right, so if, if comets are dirty snowballs, are they all the same type or are they different types? Well, they're different types. They're sometimes you call them short period and long period. Okay. And the short period are divided into the Jupiter family and the Halley type. I assume Halley after Halley's comet. <laughs> yes. Um, so the Jupiter family comets are defined as having periods of less than about 20 years. So this is so they go around the sun regularly, but less than 20 years. Yes. Um, so these ones you can see repeatedly. Okay. All right. The Halley-type comets periods between 20 and 200 years. It's about 75 years for Halley's comet. So essentially, they're, they're similar. They're just a little. They go a little bit further out. For yeah. So these are sort of things you can see repeatedly, and so these tend to be the ones that spacecraft go to. Okay. Yep. These are sort of often once in a lifetime. If you, that uh, people wait every 75 years to see. Okay. Yes. And then the long period comets, which to me are the most interesting, by far the most numerous, have periods of more than 200 years. As we'll say in a bit. And so there's, by there's more than no, 200, yeah. we're talking way more. I was than say, so there's no like limit. Two million years. Okay. All right. Okay. These are once in human history. Okay. So there's kind of few times a year, a few times in your lifetime, maybe once in your lifetime, and maybe once in no one's <laughs> lifetime. That's right. Okay. So let's start off with the Jupiter family comets. Um, and these, so here's an orbit. So I've got the Sun, Venus, Earth, and Mars, and we'll yep. put them in orbit around the Sun. And this is, and the this is a typical Jupiter, Jupiter family yep. comet. Okay. And they're called Jupiter family because their orbits typically take them out to about where Jupiter is. Okay, so that's why it actually it does kind of seemingly start relatively close in comparison to the inner planets. Yeah, so that's if it went further out, it would take longer. So yep. it, it can't go much further out. The Jupiter orbit would be classified as a different type of yep. comet. And these comets. They're in highly eccentric orbits. Yep. And so this is what we talked about with the, the Kuiper Belt, this eccentricity of a lot of these orbits. Yes. And they're also inclined by yep. quite a lot. Um, they have to be eccentric, because if they went out of Jupiter and they weren't eccentric, we'd never see them if they just stayed yep. out of Jupiter's orbit. So Fair there probably enough. are ones. Out there, but. Yeah, they'd probably be called the Trojan asteroids. Yeah, OK, all right. And because they stay out there, they stay cold and they don't show tails. Gotcha. But we now know that actually many of the outer asteroids do show very small tails. Yep. So there's no really hard and fast boundary between some of the asteroids that are a long way out where they can have ices. Um, and they then, probably would be comets if they came in. Yep, OK. Um, so it's kind of this interchangeable definition, really, depending on, I guess, where it's located more than anything. Yep. I mean, the asteroids in the inner part of the asteroid are too hot to have yes, the ices, that's right. but the ones further out could and you think do have ices, yep. and the Trojans almost certainly would look very much like comets. And that's kind of one of the big excesses of, of the Lucian mission going out to go visit these Trojan asteroids. That's right. And they tend to have orbits, and they are eccentric, yep. um, and they're inclined, but they, they still tend to go around in the same sense as the planets. Okay, all right. So, so, they, so Anti-clockwise in this diagram. That's right. So it's almost, they're, they're kind of like what Pluto does almost yeah but just much, much closer. closer in and much smaller only a few kilometers rather than a few thousand kilometers okay and so probably these things actually do come from the Kuiper belt okay that's why they have the same sort of inclinations as yep. the Kuiper belt so the idea would be that some Kuiper belt object and these are much smaller than the Kuiper belt objects we can see yep we can only see the ones that are hundreds of kilometers big but there are almost certainly many more Kuiper belt objects that are only a few kilometers that are just too small to see when they're out there yep um, and they're probably much more numerous yeah and so what happens is presumably some of them get hit by one of the resonances of Neptune and get warped into another orbit. And as we talked about, they can probably either get pushed out or pushed in. So these are the ones that got pushed in. Yep. And um, they probably had a close encounter with Jupiter, which is why they're Jupiter family orbits. That's why the orbit goes close to Jupiter. Gotcha. And that brought them into the inner solar system. Yep. So presumably there's a steady supply of these things working their way in from the Kuiper belt, yep. most of which never make into the inner solar system. And a few do because they've given a push or pull by Jupiter and Saturn and so on, and they end up in these sort of orbits. OK. Um, and then, of course, they don't last very long. I was going to say, if it's going around every 20 years or so or less, it's bound to have a very short lifetime. And most of these comets have already been around lots of times, and that's why they're often not very spectacular. Yep, okay. These, these are not the most spectacular comets to see, generally, because they've probably already lost 70-80% of their gas. Yeah, so, okay, and, that, and that's really, it's the gas and the dust that's falling off these comets yep. that produce those beautiful tails. That's right. Uh, what they do produce, though, is meteorite showers. Ah, okay. So, here's a, a time-lapse of the night sky. Yep. And if you look every now and then, you see a shooting star. See one there? And there's a star. I just saw another one there. Yep. One over here. There. Yeah. So, so these are bits of rock, but it's not asteroids. It's actually from a comet. Some of them could be asteroids. But a lot of them seem to come in showers. Yep. Um, now, people often think you go out there, it's like... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but in practice, you, you, what it means is you go out there, you let your eyes adjust, you 
get a nice rug to lie on, lie on your back with a friend, a glass of wine or something, and chat and look at these things. And then you'll see the peak of a shower. A Quite a few of these things an hour. Yeah, you can see, I mean, some you can produce a couple dozen. Some of the good ones in the Northern Hemisphere, maybe one a minute. But yes, it's not raining down bits on you. Yes. Um, and if you take a, a time-lapse photo, you can see that these things tend to come from what's called the radiant, one position in the sky. Okay, yep. So what it seems to be is actually rings of rock orbiting the sun. Yep. And every time the Earth goes through one of these rings in its orbit, you get these showers. And so we're intersecting kind of at essentially a, a similar point in space relative to the Earth and the stars. So that's why it always appears to come from the same spot. So they occur at the same sort of date. Yep. And they always appear to fan out from one particular place because they've got a common motion. And we think this is because they come from Jupiter family comets. Okay. So here's a comet, and now I'm going to put it in orbit, uh, a, a typical short period comet orbit. Mm -hmm. And I'd get it let it now instead of getting rid of dust grains, I'm going to have it far out bigger grains. Okay, all right. So these grains are now maybe centimetre size or 100 microns or even 10 microns. Yeah. And at these bigger sizes, the, the radiation from the sun doesn't really affect them very ah, much. Ah, so, so, so with the previous kind of comets we're seeing, it's really things that are nanometer or smaller scale that are very easy to blow, but these are too big to be blown around by the sun. Yeah, so these could be as big as boulders, you know, yeah. lumps of rock, or they're just the size of your thumb, or they could be the size of a grain of sand on the beach. But basically anything more than a few microns is going to be too big to be affected by the solar wind or yep. by the uh, radiation. And yep. so these things, as you can see, tend to spread out along the orbit of the comet. So it's essentially it quite literally does almost leave a trail in its orbit behind it. So what you can see is as the comet breaks up, and this could be the very last stages of the comet, um, the, the last of the, uh, the ice has gone away and the comet just turns into a cloud of boulders, yep. and you end up with these elliptical rings. Okay. And we can actually see these rings at infrared. So here's Comet Enki, and you can see... So this is one of those rings of stuff that has yeah. fallen off, not again blown off, this has fallen off and not being blown away by the sun. Yeah, so again, it's following around the orbit of Comet NK in this particular case. Yep. And when we plow through one of these rings, I mean, there are lots of these rings out there. Most of them don't go anywhere near the Earth's orbit. But there are some of them that once a year or whatever, so a predictable time will go through this. And, so and depending on whether they go right through the middle or through the outer part. That's right. So we keep crossing it essentially about the same time and the same point in space with a little bit of variation. And that gives us these meteorite showers. Excellent.